Now, Timothy Maurice and Sapisa Poza have co-authored a powerful book called Fueling Futures. The book offers us insight into the portrait of Sapisa's life throughout her perspective. And she looks back on the challenges and triumphs that she has experienced. So the reader is totally inspired to delve into the innermost depths of self-reflection through each chapter in order to discover their own truths and set forward a path for personal change. So if you have a question for Tapisa or Timothy on how you can change your life for the better, connect with us online by tweeting us at Afternoon Chat or commenting on our Facebook page. But please do remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Welcome to the show. Wow, thank you for having us. It's great to have you and congratulations on your book. So let's start off with finding out how did the two of you meet? We were introduced through uh, mutual business partners of yeah. ours. So she had been going on this kind of personal branding journey and they were like, we think based on sort of my background and sort of writing books and so forth that our energies and our journeys would complement each other. So we met yeah. over a number of coffees and um, and it just sort of, we decided we want to do it. And at first, we weren't really sure yeah. if we would work out because it's a journey together. And you've got to yeah. actually like each other, enjoy being yeah. around each other. Yeah. yeah. And considering the fact that we didn't know each other, um, I think it was quite difficult for us to decide, um, am I ready for me to write the book with him? I went through different um, authors and different writers. But at the same time, I was like, you know what, let's take this journey together. It's a journey. We were not friends at all. Now yeah. we're like so close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard that uh, you were speaking about, and when you heard her story, you were like, this has to be a book. And I must say, after experiencing some of the, or reading some of the chapters in your book, I thought, it, it, it's a story that absolutely has to be shared. You've gone through so much. And, but you've written it quite differently, because in the beginning, you've kind of written a piece, and then there's, it's a piece of story. <clears throat> so how is it put together, and why did you decide to read it, yeah. to write it? So this is an investigative look from my lens at her story. So the yeah. idea was, so I've written four books on the idea of psychology of personal branding. So I want to have a real case study now. Yeah. So she's under 30 years old. I wanted to look at a woman who is in the fuel industry, simultaneously dealing with her personal journey while dealing with being in a male dominated environment. Yeah. Can you imagine being a power player in an industry where you're the only woman a lot of times? So I wanted to look at specifically what does she have to go through to tackle her own life while yeah. dealing with the male dominated industry and while dealing with the social media stuff and being an mm -hmm. influencer and dealing with being a woman in this sort of space. So, yeah. the, so you know, it's a Q&A type of structure where we ask questions and then she unpacks and unloads her story and then we pin it that way. I was interviewing an author yesterday and his publisher and manager was here and she said, you have to write a book, I'd read it. And I thought to myself, I couldn't think of anything more terrifying than putting my story <laughs> down on paper for others to read. It's, it makes you extremely vulnerable. And however, it must be quite a cathartic experience to go through. It must be a place of healing as well. Tell me a little bit about your personal decision to put your story into a book. So um, on my side, I wanted to write a book because I felt that my story needed to be heard. I've got this perspective because I'm from a political background. Um, my family basically growing up in that space that I'm a typical political baby. And it's affected me in terms of how I do business and where with certain doors that I want to open up, but they yeah. shut because my father might be fighting with somebody and he said something. So now it affects me. And I just wanted to make it very clear that I've got my own journey to, um, yeah. to, to, to for, um, my own and journey to walk and I've also got my own legacy and you know people say to me um oh, you've got big shoes to fill I said what shoes I've just seen my parents as yeah. leaders and examples for me but at the same time I've got my own journey and I wanted to share my story to say if I could go through certain pains and I could overcome them although yeah. it was not easy so can you exactly. and I want to talk to the whole thing of um in terms of committing suicide that the suicide is, is getting out of hand yeah. and also the abuse my favorite chapter is um, chapter 8 inspired by abuse I lost my voice and I needed a different way to find my voice and I, I wanted my to ask you about you that because that was the most hurtful thing for me to read is that you wanted to follow your, your life in music mm -hmm. and that was taken away from you by a lover do you want to just tell the audience about that story so basically um, 
Um, I wanted to do music. Um, I had studied at Trin Trinity Grand Hill and um, my parents had said no to me, you have to do your plan B because you don't know about your voice, what's yeah. going to happen. Music for me, for them was not appealing. So I studied um, business and then I didn't do well because I was being forced to study something I did not love, I didn't have passion for it. Yeah. But what happened is I got strangled last year in China on a trip with a previous partner that I was seeing at the time. And I lost my voice physically for two months. I couldn't speak. I was speaking like this, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't express myself. So I said, you know, I need to share my story um, because I feel that I'm blessed to actually be still, <laughs> to still yeah. be alive. I mean, my parents found out about it when I got back from um, China. I was uh, taking my clothes out of his house um, before he gets back from work. And I passed out in the Uber. When I woke up, my parents were next to me. And I said to myself, well, you know what, for the voices, those women who are dead today because of abuse and because they couldn't speak out, I want us to start talking about this because the more we talk about it, the more we stand together, you know, the better it is going to become. The way, the way it reads is that you can imagine somebody strangling so hard that hatred to literally take your voice away. I'm so sorry that you ever had to go through that. Mm. But that's why the story is so important to read. Tell me about some of the other themes that you, that you confront so world. we confront um female fuel basically yeah. to, as women um i found the older women in certain industries they feel that we've been in this game yeah. we know how it works you don't tell us this but at the same time when you, you, you when you start trying out new ideas as a young individual like i'm very pushy i push myself yeah and i push the people around me because i'm Good always wanting to do things differently yeah. differently in my spaces my primary business is petroleum but um differently in the sense of how i do my community work you know, um, so basically, fem uh, uh, female fuel is important to me because I feel that we need to stand mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And for some reason, I, o I also mentioned in the book, I say, um, we must suffer from pull her up syndrome and stop suffering from pull her down syndrome. Let's yeah. take hands and let's collaborate let's, together yeah. and let's stop suppressing the young voice. This book isn't only important for women to read, but for men as well. Why do you think men need to read this book? You know, I think understanding how the male instinct can be pathetic. Mm. So our raw nature to go and mate, to have sex, can land in the most horrible, disgusting ways. Mm. There was a moment when we were, she was opening up her story about a childhood experience where she was abused sexually by doing this kind of um, exercise where they were playing a game where the young boy you know, got on top of her and was exercising this kind of primitive instinct that led to an abuse moment where she was raped. And as I was thinking about this, I'm like, we're not having these conversations no. to young boys to understand themselves and this nasty kind of thing that can turn into something beautiful. Yeah. But if it's not regulated and understood as a young kid, you've got these wild instincts. And it, you know, so I've now decided after this, writing this book with her, that I want to work with more young boys as well. I think that you know the girl movement is very important and we need to continue with that as well. But helping young boys to understand their instincts because I can imagine, how, how old was this little? I was, I was six. You um, were six and how old I, was he? He was 13. 13 yeah. years old. At 13 you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know the difference between right and wrong. I think this book is extraordinary and I really hope that everyone in South Africa reads it because especially it's fueling futures from influence to impact. Nowadays everyone and their kitten is an influencer but who has real influence mm -hmm. and it's stories like this that can really influence our youth. Thank you so much Thank for writing you. it. So we've asked you at home if you've got a question for Tapisa or Timothy on how you can change your life for the better. So let's see what you guys have had to say. So Entle Sidelo. Sidelo says, how can I know if someone is actually helping me or if they're being a distraction in my life? What an amazing question. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's such a good question. Do you guys yeah, have Yeah, I mean, for me, I think the first thing you have to ask yourself, how does my energy sit with this person? Do I feel like this person is promoting and complimenting my goals? Do I feel as though they're helping elevate me? Do they understand yeah. what I'm trying to achieve? Are they trying to partner with me on this journey or yeah. are they trying to distract me? Do I feel bad? Are they pulling me away from my goals? And I think that, you know, if they are driving you towards and you feel good about it, it's probably a good perspective and healthy. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Entle. That's a very good answer because I think everyone has an opinion. Be careful who you take your opinions yeah, from exactly. because not everyone's going to be right. So thank you so much for communicating with us online. We really do love hearing from you. After the break, we head over to the kitchen. Flavorful feta and pecan pepper sausage rolls prepared by Chef Mo. Mm, it's going to be good.